do you have exercise induced bronchoconstriction, exercise induced asthma? Do you want to learn simple tools to help significantly reduce it and to improve control? When you're doing physical exercise, make sure that you really warm up well, especially if you're prone to any exercise induced bronchoconstriction. A very good way to do this would be to do all of your warm ups and I would say your physical exercise breathing through your nose. Your nose moistens and warms the incoming air. Your mouth, if you're breathing through the mouth, you're causing moisture to be sucked out of the airways and this is going to in turn cause inflammation. And when your air airways become inflamed, they narrow and then you're feeling you're not getting enough air and you're going to breathe harder and that harder breathing is going to feed back into airway constriction. So if you think of say the main airway, so we say that we have the trachea, we have the bronchi, and then we have the smaller branches and they're gen there's about 23 generations of branches and they're getting progressively smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. We have to protect those and we protect those by breathing through the nose. So anybody with exercise induced bronchoconstriction, it's very likely that you're going to continue experiencing it until your bolt score is at least 25 seconds because your bolt score is giving you feedback of your breathing pattern. If you have an abnormal or if you have, you know, suboptimal breathing pattern, that's feeding into your asthma. That's feeding into your bronchoconstriction. It's not just that bronchoconstriction is changing our breathing patterns. You know, it is normal if you're feeling suffocated that you breathe harder and you probably breathe through your mouth. But it's that hard breathing that's feeding back into bronchoconstriction. And I'm not talking about your breathing per se during bronchoconstriction, during airway narrowing. So I'm not talking about your breathing during symptoms, I'm talking about your everyday breathing. If you get your everyday breathing right, your likelihood of having exercise induced bronchoconstriction is significantly reduced. So breathe through your nose, slow down your breathing, breathe using your diaphragm, Improve the biochemistry and the biomechanics of your breathing. Slow breathing with cadence breathing is also very beneficial. Breathe through your nose both during rest. Breathe through your nose during sleep. In another episode, we spoke about the importance of taping the lips at night. And also, of course, I have to realize that if you have bronchoconstriction, you're probably likely to have congestion of the nose. You can free that by simply holding the breath. So exercises from the oxygen advantage, there is a chapter specifically dealing with um, congestion of the airways, how to help improve asthma control, how to reduce exercise induced bronchoconstriction, how to open up your nose. During physical exercise, give yourself a decent warm up. Spend at least 10 minutes breathing through your nose throughout that warm up and even better, do a few breath holds during the warm up. So as, as you're doing your physical exercise, as you're warming up, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your nose, pinch your nose, and to hold your breath after an exhalation, you know, until a medium air hunger. And then let go of your nose, breathe through your nose, and continue warming up for about a minute, and then do a breath hold again. And if you can get five breath holds during your warm up, it's helping to open up the airways. Because when you hold your breath, it opens up the nose, but also when you hold your breath, it's helping to open up the lungs. And breath holding as well, it's interesting because it's increasing CO2 in the blood. Carbon dioxide in the blood increases during breath holding. And if we were looking at, I know it's a little bit technical, the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, but breath holding causes a right shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, meaning that hemoglobin releases oxygen more readily to the cells. If you do breath holding during the warm up, you're increasing body oxygenation. Your muscles are getting more oxygen and that's going to be conducive to a better performance then during your physical routine. So if you have bronchoconstriction, there's a lot you can do with it and it starts with your breathing. Um, start paying attention to your breathing. If you're breathing fast and shallow and breathing hard and sighing every now and again, you know, we should never have visual breathing during rest. It should be difficult to see our breathing during rest. Use that as a rule of thumb. Make changes to your breathing and you'll change your asthma and bronchoconstriction.